Hello everyone, it's Luke here from 3D Tutor, and today we're back with another complete guide. This one is a bit of a special one as the main focus of this environment was to get a traditional Japanese style within our scene, in our own unique stylized way. It has to be one of the best ones we've done so far as in regards to the sheer scale of the project. We put a lot of thought and effort into making it look authentic and unique. Before we move on though, if you're interested in how long this scene took and what are our thoughts on how difficult it was in regards to putting it all together, then stay till the end where we will give you a complete breakdown of how long each of the sections took and what skill level you might need in each of the parts. The scene comes with its own packed blend file as well as an Unreal Engine project, both complete with all textures and models you see here. So you can download these assets and try them out yourself. Links to everything are down below. And while you're there, give us a like and hit the subscribe button. The packs are great if you want to see how exactly the scene was put together to help in any future Blender or Unreal Engine projects you may be working on now or in the future. These packs and courses are available via our Gumroad with all the YouTube complete guides. Also, anyone that signs up to our Patreon basically gets everything on our Gumroad for the price of a cup of coffee, so be sure to check out our Patreon link as well. Twice a week we release a complete guide just like this one, so be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification and get up to date with our newest uploads. If you want your idea to be featured though in one of our complete guides, then drop a comment down below as we'd really love to get some inspiration from you. And finally, all of the techniques you see here are covered in our massive library of over 20 courses with 200,000 downloads, so be sure to check those out. And now on with the show, what you're here for is the guide, so let's get started on our Japanese Imperial Dynasty Environment Guide. Welcome everyone to the modeling part of the video. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not the one that did the modeling, it was Neil who did all of it, the main guy behind the 3D tutor, but due to personal reasons he won't be able to make commentary on this video, so instead I'll be covering for him. But don't worry as we basically worked on this project together and when he did all the modeling I was basically over the shoulder watching every step he did. That's just quite a magician when it comes to modeling and I love seeing him work. So yeah, getting right into the action, he started off by getting main pieces out of the way first and those would be for the main building so he wanted to make sure that the tiles are set up properly because it's going to be the probably the main, the most visible thing within the environment and so it just has to look just right even when not textured, the silhouette of the entire roof has to make sure it has a certain flow within it and the pattern for the tiles as well they have to be going in the same kind of direction, in the right kind of a flow, and of course they have to be a little bit randomized, just to make sure that they look like they're hand built. Before doing that though, we gotta make sure that the tiles do have a certain pattern and they're laid out in a way that would help us to build the entire roof. But once you have the overall kind of a pattern, you're able to then use a deformer, a lettuce deformer to be exact, and you can make use out of it to build basically any type of shape or roof that you want. And that's quite crucial in building this environment as you want some curved roofs for your areas, especially at the front of the gates. So after we got the front shape for the roofs and we made sure that the roof, the overall kind of a tile pattern works really well, we had then moved on with the main building for this environment and we started modeling the overall kind of a roof for it as well. So of course we'll have to make sure we deform it to the interesting overall shape that the traditional Japanese housing would have and they're always going inwards and if they happen to have multiple levels they'd be kind of layering on top of one another so that's why we had to make sure we get the roof positioning uh, just right for the overall shape and we just used uh, primitive shapes in order to just get the overall kind of a layout of the top sections of the structure and once we were happy with it we then had to basically lay out all of our roof tiles in a nice kind of a manner and of course we had to make sure that they follow the right kind of a flow within the roof and so in order for us to help out with that we made use out of bisect tool and we just cut off the corners where the roof would end and that just kind of helped us to make sure that when we're building the other sides of the tiles they're not overlapping with one another but yeah once we were happy with the front we just had to make sure we do the side as well and once we do that basically we can just make a duplicate out of it save us some time by uh, just flipping the entire roof tile asset to the side but that's why we have to make sure we sort out the front and the side of the roofs properly and looking at the overall design i was uh, initially thinking that maybe it would have been better if 
we just had a one variation at the very bottom and that kind of stacked one on top of each other but thinking about it now i kind of realized that it actually is nicer to have uh, variations of the roof level so although the shape uh, has uh, more or less the kind of the same look each one of the levels has a slightly different design and that just kind of makes us help to uh, build the overall building in a more organic kind of a way but yeah once we're done with the overall kind of tiling we have to make sure we also set up the corners as well for the edges of the roofs we have to make sure we kind of break down the overall tiling and it also just helps us get some nicer ornamental details for the overall structure so when playing around with the shapes just using some splines and uh, getting a nice kind of a snake look just to um, help us get some additional details out of the housing as well as just bring us uh, some symbolism within the environment itself because if we wouldn't add any of the detail it would just kind of look too generic so the main kind of a um, detail that we were going for within this environment was um snake symbolism so later on you'll notice that we're also adding some snakes into the other sections of our environments as well just to make sure we're kind of uh, staying consistent with the overall design of the environment obviously we don't want to overdo it so we're not going to be adding a snake head to each one of the roof levels we're only adding it to one end just to make sure we have enough aeration as well as just to not overdo it because otherwise it would just look too noisy and it would kind of lose its focal point whenever uh, you're looking at the building and overall you just gotta make sure you uh, have certain details within one areas and just have some variation in other areas so have a more of a consistent visual flow within your environment so once we are happy with the overall kind of a side for the edge of the building of course we gotta continue on with the front and now that we know how the one side is going to look like we gotta figure out how the tiles are going to be acting up within the our uh, roof and how it's just going to connect with the overall design of the building and of course by playing around with kind of a primitive shape by getting the right kind of results using extrusion and getting some basic shapes in and uh, of course most of the detail will be done within action part using uh, height maps and normal maps and just getting some of that additional detail in but all in all we just have to make sure that we're getting some depth out of it so even when you're looking at the overall design for an environment in just without any type of textures and you're just looking at the plain kind of a mesh it would look good regardless without any kind of additional detail put in uh, the texturing part and like setting up the environment is all of it is just kind of an icing on a cake the main thing that you have to make sure you got it right is the modeling and if the models the environment doesn't turn out right no matter how much of an effort you put in into the texturing part or environment setup in general if the meshes don't look right it just won't look nice but yeah continuing on with the roof we obviously need to break apart a little bit more with some seams to get some additional support within our structure and we gotta make sure that all of it just looks like it's connected and it's part of the same building and they're not just kind of stuck and glued with one another and instead they actually have some structural integrity to them so by using some of the seams and just connecting them that way they actually look like they're being held by some proper uh, wood supports that you would have gotten while building this type of a uh, traditional housing so yeah by getting those out of the way we also have to make sure that each of the tiles are actually laid in within our housing properly within our roofs and they're actually connecting nicely with the edges and we're not le leaving any of the gaps left behind so by moving in our camera and just checking over overall kind of a design we're just making sure that we're not leaving any of the caps on our ends and uh, once we're happy with that we can actually just uh, play around with the shapes make sure that they look kind of nice and maybe use some deformations just kind of a nicer silhouette out of the overall kind of a shape so just by deforming it just a little bit on itself and curving it in the middle we're getting a much nicer kind of authentic looking roof for our environment now perhaps in the reality you wouldn't get such a curve uh, in this area but the overall kind of a stylized look or environment it makes it look so much better all in all and the overall kind of a silhouette that you're getting out of it would look much nicer in return and since we're not going with a complete kind of a realism we can always play around with the shapes a little bit and exaggerate some of the features and yeah once we're happy with the roofs we can also move on onto the edges of the walls and seeing how they're going to connect all of those roofs together so of course we don't want the roofs to be sticking one to each other uh, just right away and otherwise 
the areas wouldn't look like they have any of the levels, any of the housing inside, any of the space. So we gotta make sure we add some walls and kind of put the roofs on top of them. And in turn, just makes it look so much nicer overall. So yeah, once we're happy with the main base of the walls for the structure, we continue on working on the front section of the building. And we gotta figure out how we're going to make it look a little bit fancier than usual. This overall kind of structure would look more like a royalty housing and whatnot so of course we gotta make make sure we uh, decorate it accordingly with the front and uh, while building the pillars we wanted to get some radial symmetry so making use of calculator real quick and finding out what would be the perfect radial symmetry uh, get the right kind of gaps in between those pillar decorations was quite a fast way to do it basically and once we got the pillar sorted with some extra decoration on top of it we just had to make sure we add uh, just enough decoration so it would make it look fancy but not too much as in otherwise the pillars would look uh, too noisy so getting just the right kind of a noise just the right enough of a detail is uh, usually quite hard but because we started off with the overall structure of the house we know the scale of the building and we also have some tiles it actually helps us to see how much detail we already have within our structure and it just helps us to not overdo it in regards to how much we're adding to our decorations. So right now, even with the doors, for example, we can see how many of the bits are poking out. And I think now it's just the right amount. Otherwise, if it would have been too much, it would have maybe looked overly complicated. And from a distance, you wouldn't even be able to see that. So when working with smaller detail, it's important to know how far your camera is going to be going from and what the purpose of this prop is. So because it's just a part of an asset, part of the house structure, and we're not going to go like really close to it. We don't have to be worried about too much of a detail. We just got to get the right kind of a pattern in the door just to make sure that it is set up nicely as in regards to the ornaments. And once we get it right, we just got to make sure that it sits nicely within our structure for the house. So right now we're just making sure it sits nicely within the overall kind of a design. And just by using a simple boolean and cutting out its shape using a square and getting a door right to be right in the middle within our structure is overall quite a nice result for our building. And yeah, once we're happy with that, we just got to make sure that we break apart some of the edges as well. Otherwise, if we just leave the walls uh, hanging as is, they wouldn't look quite as nice as first of all, you would see the seams of the textures. And secondly, it'd be quite hard to highlight the silhouette of the house uh, after we're done modeling. since uh, we wouldn't be able to get like any of the crevice shadows and whatnot. And it just makes it that much harder to highlight the kind of an overall shape of the house. So yeah, we also got to make sure that we kind of get some foundations for the corners as well, as it's just another way of breaking apart the overall kind of shape and making sure that the overall kind of a structural integrity is being maintained. So we'd want to have some support for the bottom of the housing, especially the size of what we're having right now. And that just helps us to make sure that the overall kind of a structure looks solid and doesn't look like it's about to fall over but yeah once we're happy with the overall kind of a size we uh, had to make sure we decorate the size of the walls as well just a little bit just to continue on with the kind of a fancy look for the structure and of course we got to make sure that we did all the way throughout the building and we got to make sure that the pattern is being kept at the same distance so the front the sides and the back would maintain the same kind of scaling when working with large buildings it's important to have the pattern to be consistent as that is what helps us to gouge the overall kind of a scale of a building when for example you're looking from the bottom to the top and you see the same kind of pattern at the very top but obviously because of the perspective you'd see a smaller version and that overall would kind of help you to realize the overall scale of how big the very top is although it might look much smaller our brain would help us to kind of identify the overall scale of the structure but yeah moving on of course we gotta make sure we uh, build with more than just the structure and the rest of the items within the environment is kind of more like um, to complement the overall structure to the building and of course we can't just make it look super simple because we have already uh, a really nice structure for the building we gotta make sure we kind of keep the consistency with the detail the rest of our environment so going back to the modeling part uh, doing the modeling for the bridge 
we're gonna get a nice silhouette for the overall kind of shape and of course we start off with a, like a really nice uh, narrow planks that would help us to kind of visualize how the overall bridge would look like we want to have a real nice tall kind of a structure but of course the proportions have to look just right so using a human mesh just to make sure that the proportions are looking just right is quite nice and of course in regards to the height of the bridge because we're going to have some water underneath gotta make sure we leave some of that space for the bottom section just because of that and while working with railing uh, we gotta get some pattern in as well being consistent with the pattern is quite nice when working with some fancier stuff like this bridge for example because it's uh, an item that is quite close to the fancy looking structure we gotta make sure that we decorate it accordingly and using patterns is just a nice way of getting that uh, rich looking environment set up and of course um, this can be done with something like array mesh and just kind of having the perfect kind of symmetry and pattern throughout the bridge but by doing by hand we make sure that the overall kind of shape looks a little bit more organic and of course once we're happy with the overall design we gotta get some nice curvature shape for the bridge as well since that just adds to the stylized version it breaks apart some silhouettes and not only that because we had some curved roofs for the main structure as well it just helps us to keep the consistency with the overall design that we're having and yeah getting a first bridge was quite easy getting a second bridge was a bit more of a hassle since uh, we wanted to curve it a little bit to the side as well and kind of attach it just right uh, to the side of the building but yeah, having a few bridges over and just seeing how they're going to look like within our environment. Just setting up the overall kind of a design, the overall look or the pathway of where the person would be able to walk through is nice. Uh, sometimes setting up the pattern for like a terrain and getting the overall shape of the land might be easy in certain cases. In other cases, it's just nicer to set up everything like all the props, all the main props for the structure in exactly the way that you want it and then building your terrain around it. But that all depends on the type of workflow that you want because uh, while working with the rain would be helpful in regards to getting a more organic kind of a feeling out of the structures since you're rebuilding the structures on top of the already natural kind of a looking scope that you'd have. But you wouldn't be having a lot of control out of how you're placing the buildings in regards to placing all the structures first and then building the terrain afterwards it helps you to get the right kind of a flow or where you want path pathways to be set up and the type of levels that you want the structures to be around and then afterwards you'd be connecting all of those together nicely with the terrain and that just helps us to make sure that it is kind of connected all of it uh, properly in the right kind of way so yeah moving on going back to setting up another structure we're uh, making sure that the roof is set up for our other structure nicely so right now we want to make sure that the smaller tall tower that's at the very front of our environment is going to be looking quite nice as well and this one instead of just a square structure we want to make sure that we have some cylindrical uh, smaller tower as not only it helps us with breaking apart that kind of a square shape for the main building it also kind of fits very well with the regards to the curved shapes that we are having so right now um, just so right now once we got like the main kind of a shape we're leaving it as is for now and just playing around with the arc uh, for where the bridges are going to be connected and again going back to the overall kind of design getting those curved shapes in and making sure the overall design uh, it's consistent throughout our entire level now moving on of course we gotta make sure that the overall structure for the door is not just a circular kind of a donut look on the mesh and we gotta make sure that it is structured properly so we end up needing uh, to build a wall that actually kind of supports the overall kind of walkway and that just adds towards the design and just makes it make sure it just connects the overall kind of a structure with one another now of course we gotta leave some space for the door as well for the frame part so we gotta cut out the hole using a simple boolean operation that just helps us to get a really nice kind of a mesh out of it and then we can finally connect our frame within that area and make a really nice design out of it now by default the frame didn't look quite right so we ended up just getting some additional decorations out of it and of course uh, we gotta make sure we add just the right amount of detail since everything else is ornamental it looks very nice it has nice patterns so this time we're having some uh, certain brick pattern 
set up for this overall kind of layout. So from the front and the back, uh, the pattern layout is a little bit more chunkier. And then the middle section would have a bit of a smaller bricks. But of course, we got to make some of those gaps a little bit more noticeable. Otherwise, from a distance, they wouldn't look quite as good. So we got to make sure we uh, have it uh, looking a little bit chunky just to break apart the overall kind of a mesh within that area and of course the top section of this uh, walkway wouldn't look quite as nice by default so we need to make sure we add some roof tiles as well and this time we're just adding it manually and just making sure that they're kind of fitting it nicely within the middle section and once we do the other side to save up some time we're just mirroring the overall design to the other side and just getting nice results and just playing around with the, the ornamental decoration in the middle and getting a nice kind of a silhouette out of it. Once we're done with it all, we can finally place it right in the middle between the bridges. And then afterwards, we're going to use the terrain to connect the overall kind of design with one another. So yeah, once we're happy with that, we can now go back to the tower and we need to make sure we set it up properly. But we're still not quite sure how uh, we're going to finish that up. So we're leaving that behind and actually we're going to go and get a nice platform in the middle just to break apart the overall kind of a shape as it circles around the terrain but we don't have anything in the middle so we're going to use a yin yang symbol that is probably one of the most known uh, symbols to use and it just makes a real nice platform in the middle we're using a knife tool just because it helps us to cut out the shape in a nice kind of a way and thinking about it we could have just took an image and transferred further to an SVG format and then use that in order to generate the shape out of it but that would have taken too long and thinking about it now since the platform is going to be made out of stones we don't have to have a perfect type of symmetry we don't have to have exact shape and instead we can just trace around using a knife tool and just cut out the shape and then getting a nice border around it just helps the overall kind of a stone design for this uh, touch so now going back to the overall out of a small tower that we had in the front thinking how to break apart this edge of course since we're using snakes for the tops of the roofs we can play around with that same kind of a design and we wouldn't have anything that would help us to break up the overall flow of the tower and it would look kind of plain and because we're having so many ornamental detail within our environment that would just look so out of place it wouldn't look quite as right so going back it, we just use a nice spiral and just kind of rotating a mesh around to get it in the right kind of position and making sure that the snake head is facing forwards and giving us some nice results overall so once we're happy with that we continue on playing around with the overall uh, kind of a tower that we're having we gotta make sure that we're setting up some uh, structure support for the roof as well and we gotta figure out how we're going to be able to access this tower as well so just having a bridge connected to the overall tower wouldn't look quite as nice so instead what we're going to do is we're going to have some pillars sticking out from the ground which are going to be in the water by the way so they're going to be sticking from the water and you'd be able to kind of hop your way into the tower using those smaller pillars at first when i saw that i was like really interested by it because i wasn't quite sure if i liked it but during the rendering process i really liked the way it interacted with the water and the overall silhouette it gave uh, that added up to the environment gave off a really nice touch as it gave us some nice lighting to the overall scene. So all in all, I think it just definitely helps to give that kind of a nice glow towards our environment with the curved shapes or not. And yet it still helps to uh, break apart those structures by making sure that they're separated from one another. So yeah, that quite turned out uh, really nice. Going back to the tower though, we gotta make sure we keep consistent with the decorations as well. So similar to the decorations that we had for the sides of the structure of the main building, uh, we wanted to make sure that we're having those structural kind of decorations added to it as well. And we just have to make sure we are layering them out in a radial pattern. And once we're happy with that, we gotta make sure we figure out what to do with the rest of the environment. So right now, the front section is already looking pretty nice but maybe we need to add something for the back as well just to make sure that not only the walls of the structure would be visible but something would be helping us to kind of break apart the overall edges the walls and give us some nice as well as in general so by working 
on a bell and getting a nice result out of it. Of course, we're making use out of a node system for the rope and that just helps us to generate a real nice rope in a way that we want. It just has a simple node system with, which kind of spirals around the mesh and helps us get the type of variation that we want. And yeah, by connecting this to the bell and getting the nice kind of results out of it, we're able to make it look really nice in regards to how the bell is being hanged from the top of this frame. And we just gotta make sure we're setting up in the right kind of way. Also adding thickness to the bell, we gotta make sure we do that as well. Although most of the view shots will be from the top, we gotta make sure we have some integrity to the overall mesh. And once we're happy with that, we just gotta play around a little bit with how our light interacts with the mesh itself. So right now, by adding a simple torch to the side, it just helps to break apart the overall kind of um, mesh and the structure and just helps us get some nice detail out of this area. And also in the future, if we want, we can also make use out of this and light up our entire asset for the bell using it. But we can always come back to that and get any type of result that we want in the end. And of course, uh, just to make sure we add some extra touch to the bell, and to this part of the scene, we gotta add some additional decorations, some additional props and figuring, just playing around with the shapes, figuring out what it would look nice with, and then deciding that it would look nicest with some incense and just having them kind of be slightly lit up uh, just to, again, break up the overall edge for that frame and just make sure that the amount of detail that we're having is being more consistent because we're not going to have a lot of decoration on that end for the bell. Anna has to look a little bit more isolated and she tell a little bit more of a story to us that area as in the backside of that structure we just have a bit of a different flow to the overall design but yeah going back to the structure to the main building of our asset we of course have to make sure we break apart that square looking foundation and I think the nicest way would be just to make use out of some fences and getting the same kind of a pattern that we have for the sides of the walls the kind of a square to help us a nice frame for the sides as well as just helping us to get some nice shadows by the end of it since these things are going to be hitting the sides of our building and in the end they're just going to give us some really nice results but yeah the getting the back side was quite easy but we have to make sure we're connecting it properly to the side as well or where the stairs are going to be connected so by stretching out the entire mesh just a little bit is just enough to make sure that we're connecting it in the right kind of way and the frame itself would end in where we want it to be of course we gotta make sure we not overdo that because otherwise if we have one side to be like really wide and another side to be totally squished up it wouldn't look quite right so when using scaling mode in that kind of way we gotta make sure that we have just the right amount of control but we don't overdo it using it so yeah, going back, we gotta make sure we have the overall kind of structure set up properly. So by moving some meshes around just a little bit before continuing on with the project and just making sure that the flow for the mesh for the overall design of our environment is set up properly. And once we're happy with it, we can continue on working on some additional details for the structure. So this time, since we're pretty much done with the overall main design of our environment, we gotta make sure we think of how our scene is going to be lit up. And so one of the ways for how we can do it is we can make use out of lanterns and just kind of have some additional detail within our scene using them. And not only it helps us get some nice silhouette for the scene, it also helps us to kind of light up the overall structure for the building that we're going to have in the middle of our environment. But of course, we got to make sure that we set up the overall mesh to look just right and we gotta make sure that it doesn't look just like a blob and instead it actually has some nice detail some ornamental detail towards the overall look so by having some holes in and getting some of the detail that way we make sure we allow the light to pass through and not only that it just helps to break apart the overall edge flow for our mesh so of course we gotta make sure we keep it in the right kind of pattern we kind of support it with the edges as well and yeah once we got some nice lanterns the overall design looked quite nice but that wouldn't be enough to light up our entire environment and it wouldn't look just right if we simply reuse the lanterns throughout our entire scene so what we need to do what we gotta make sure we end up doing is we gotta make sure we create more variations of light sources so by making use out of a chain node we can make some lanterns with some chains hanging out of it 
and later on we'll be able to attach those to the poles and get some nice results in the end. Of course the poles themselves have to look a little bit more stylized so by squishing out the shape in the middle we're able to have a nice curvature which helps to get us a nice result for the overall flow of our environment and of course the bottom of the poles have to be uh, just high enough in order to make sure it touches the ground and when we're adding some water it just has to be enough of the height to not mess up with the terrain but yeah once we're done with that we gotta play around a little bit more with how our small tower looks like and how the weight is being supported we gotta make sure we hang our lantern somewhere and so by adding a little frame in the middle section we're able to get some nice results out of it so yeah then once we're done with that we gotta make sure we add some additional detail to the size of the house and by adding the lanterns at the bottom level and the middle level i think it turned out quite well and i don't think we needed any of the lanterns for our top section since it's going to be quite well lit up as well as it already has a lot of ornamental detail due to the sh uh, snake shapes that we have within it so we're going to leave it as is and then continuing on with the overall design for the building we gotta make sure we add some additional ornament detail to make sure we break apart the edges of the walls otherwise they would look too plain or they have some nice detail for the base but we gotta make sure we continue on with the type of pattern that we're having throughout the entire structure so right now again just to make sure we have a right kind of a pattern we gotta make sure we continue on with the same kind of design and the same kind of a scale that we had previously just having the same kind of ornament wouldn't look quite as interesting on the overall kind of a building so we gotta make sure we have uh, some a little bit of an extra unique uh, looking details to it as well and so for the second level of the building of course we added a different uh, design to the ornaments and we just had to make sure it still fits quite within the scene so using that same similar square pattern look was quite nice but of course we have to make sure that the overall design for these patterns are being consistent even if the base and the middle section have different types of patterns they still have to have the same kind of scale ratio throughout it and so yeah we just have to play around a little bit with that but once we got some nice results for the sides of the buildings though for the upper sections I realized by getting just the pattern it wouldn't look quite as right as squishing in uh, too many of them wouldn't look nowhere near as nice so instead we decided to add simple planks just to support the overall side of the building and yeah we only used the ornaments for the front as it had a wider amount of surface area to work with we just had to go back a little bit to the base of our building just to make sure that we're consistent with the structure and we added some planks at the bottom as well for where the pattern ends and we just connect the overall design in that kind of way since we use some planks for the sides of our building it would look a little bit out of touch if only the second and the top level would be using those kind of patterns so making sure that the frame support on the sides of the walls would be consistent we use certain amount of the same kind of frames for our areas as well and yeah by then we just ended up playing around with some patterns trying out some styles and making sure that they kind of fit nicely in overall shape just to make sure that we're getting some nice results out of the overall design and once we were happy with that we had to make sure we bevel some of the edges and we get some nice rounded off detail towards them so by playing around with the finishing touches by getting some of those details in using beveling and just smoothing out some of the edges using a automatic smooth shader with angle set mainly as a default 30 but for some of them we had to increase the angle obviously just to make sure we get the nice kind of results and of course we played around with a little bit of the gradient and got some nice results out of that once we were finished we had to make sure we get the lighting just right for the rendering scene within blender of course we had to sort out some of the lighting a little bit as well so getting a nice direction lighting just to get some nice shadows for the rendering scene and get some nice overall results for the visuals of our environment so yeah once we were done with that we had to make sure we get some final touches out of the way we really need a platform for our entire environment to sit on well for all of our assets to look a uh, real nice and present our scene in a nice kind of way of course we gotta make sure that we have some levels within our environment so the easiest way to start with that is just using a knife tool cutting out some shapes and kind of using extrusion to 
sort out how high some of the areas would be which in turn just helps us visualize the overall structure for the terrain and then once we're happy with that all we gotta do is bring everything into the zbrush and then play around with the shape using the sculpting mode since of course uh, zbrush is really helpful for when it comes to uh, creating some organic shapes within our environment and so just playing around with the brush and just simply sculpting everything out is a really nice way for working but before getting uh, to the sculpting part we need to make sure we have a solid foundation for our mesh so by using i think uh, by using a dyna mesh and then dyna meshing our entire mesh afterwards making sure we inflate some of the areas for where they didn't connect properly and getting the nice solid foundation of our mesh where it doesn't have any gaps in between was really nice and yeah once we were done with that we just had to make sure we sculpt out our overall shape in the right kind of way during this process there were some times where uh, we got some uh, holes some artifacts out of our mesh and that is because the mesh itself was too plain so in those moments what we have to do is we gotta make sure we get ourselves an inflate tool and then expand the vertices in that area and doing that just kind of squishes the overall kind of gap and when it's small enough during during the data mesh process it kind of just collapses the hole itself and just helps us get the right kind of results and yeah once we were done with that during this process of course uh, there are times where mesh just ends up crashing but that's okay i think that by default the quick save button is nine so by clicking on it we can always just save up our project and we don't have to be worried too much about the crashing and yeah then uh, going back to the process for the sculpting we just had to make sure we get a nice result for the overall pattern of our structure of our terrain and once we were happy with the way it turned out the main base we just had to make sure that all of our buildings are placed nicely on our area and of course because some of the buildings are actually going to be interacting with the structure we have to make sure that we are importing the structure within zbrush as well and then we're just sculpting out our entire terrain around those areas and then realizing that we also are going to need some rocks placed out to break up the overall terrain i just got some from a blender and then exported them out and imported into the zbrush with a nice geonode generator and that just helped us to get a base a foundation of those rocks which afterwards i just got some extra detail out of them using trip dynamic and kind of sculpting out all the smaller detail which later on which uh, we're going to be making use out of using uh, high poly to low poly uh, normal baking to just bake out all of those details and getting some nicer results for the rocks so yeah it's a little bit of a lengthy process in regards to that but it's actually quite fast once you get used out of the trim dynamic tool mostly we've been using that of course uh, there's a, it's also a flatten edge tool which kind of gives us the same results but it just is more intense in regards to helping us to break apart the overall edges and just flatten some of the detail of the rocks and once we're happy with the way our rocks turned out all we had to do is just import them in into our zbrush or rather back into blender since we can place them manually from within it as they're not too high poly and we can just make use out of them in this kind of way so by playing around with those rocks with all of these different variations we're able to have some nice design to the overall style of our mesh and yeah firstly of course we got to make sure that the way our arc in between the bridges is placed is not just flowing around in our environment and we actually have some support using those rocks so using those rocks we're able to have some really nice results out of the terrain and environment and notice how we're placing the rocks in the corners in the edges for where the water is going to be as that helps us to really break apart some of those edges and get some nice organic look to our environment so by playing around with just a couple of variations by having some rotation around and just duplicating those rocks we're getting some unique looks every time we're placing them which is actually really nice so yeah and once we're done placing all the rocks in the way that we wanted it to be we can now go and export them in into zbrush and we're just making sure that the rest of the terrain has a nice organic sort of a touch to it as well so by starting off with a clay brush we're able to get some more interesting organic shapes out we just got to make sure that we break apart some of those edges and we got to make sure that the 
platforms for where the structures are going to be placed are actually not as straight looking and they have some breaking points especially for those sides of the terrain and once we're done with the clay brush uh, we can go over with trim dynamic and cut off some of those areas around the reason we do it is because we want the rocky type of a look for our terrain so by making use out of trim dynamic we're able to get some straighter edges in a way that the rocks would have formed and this way our terrain would just kind of look nice in regards to how the rocks are placed and how the terrain is formed and of course we gotta make sure that uh, we also consider where the flow of water is going to be so for example where the water would be falling down from the waterfall it would have a sort of slope towards it since water itself would shape its own path for where it would be flowing and uh, yeah just getting those kind of smaller details in we're able to get some really nice results and of course uh, we gotta consider where the structure is placed as well during the terrain sculpting process not only for the poles where we use a slight elevation to support the overall structure for them we also are going to be using a terrain in order to support the overall tower instead of just having it be sticking out from the ground simply as that we're going to sculpt out a natural looking boulder formation and place our entire tower on top of it instead doing so though we need to consider how our snake is going to be going around its shape and so we gotta make sure we leave some gaps in between when we're sculpting that out and yeah moving on when we're sculpting the sides of the terrain we gotta make sure we upscale a little bit the sides since we're going to make ourselves a water plane which would have some really obvious seams if we wouldn't be able to have our terrain cutting it off so we gotta make sure we have some elevation on the side and we only leave some gap for where the waterfall is going to be going this way we have some more control where our where we are placing our water planes and yeah once we're happy with that uh, we're going to go back onto the blender and actually we're going to continue our sculpting process within there since we happen to have had uh, some really nice custom uh, blender brushes that we're able to simply place it on top of our mesh we'll be getting some more detail out of our entire terrain during this process and then later on we're going to be able to bake out all of our mesh detail using substance painter so that's going to be really nice of course we gotta make sure we don't use our entire mesh with such a high topology sense otherwise texturing this entire thing would be a really hard thing to do as it would be quite a performance heavy uh, work on our computer and uh, yeah we're just going to continue on placing some additional detail making sure we're rotating them around we're having all sorts of meshes to work with sometimes every once in a while we replacing the brushes themselves a little bit to a different to get just overall different types of variation the places where the water is going to be going we're going to leave them as plain looking since we're going to be adding some texture detail to those areas later on and yeah once we got some detail out from blender we got the entire terrain back into zbrush to try out to uh, do some additional sculpting to it and kind of lower certain detail for where the grass for example would be growing since otherwise the overall noise would be a little too much overall in regards to how we have our terrain so we gotta make sure we have certain control over where the rock formation type of a noise is being applied so that is why we uh, used uh, zbrush and took it the terrain itself uh, using trim dynamic just to kind of sculpt out the entire uh, area of course we have to make sure that our entire building is placed nicely within our terrain as well so going back to the terrain getting ourselves the overall entire structure uh, seeing how they're going to look like with the stairs for example and the platform for the yin yang symbol we were now able to work on the rest uh, of the terrain part of course uh, we had to make sure we're placing the stairs as well and just working with the terrain making sure it is set up properly it just has a nice overall flow for the path for where the bell is and then finally of course we had to work with a certain formation for where the bell area is as well 
since we have to make sure that we have some rock formation in that area that is where the water is going to be flowing out from we created created a certain small kind of um cave for the waterfall and then we'll be able to make use out of it and just create a nice result out of that for the water to flow from and yeah continuing on we were just playing around more with the terrain making sure we're setting our rest of the terrain in the same kind of manner that we did for the front of our environment and just using clay brush using trim uh, dynamics and just getting the main rock formation out of the way and then later on we'll be able to make use out of the noise uh, brushes just to get some additional rock formations so yeah just making sure that the overall terrain is basically fitting in within our environment within our assets that we're having laid on the ground so for example the platform that we have for the yin yang we're just having some additional terrain piled up uh, next to it just so it would have additional support added with it and yeah once we're done uh, kind of sculpting it out within zbrush we're then able to uh, sort out the rock formations that we had uh, previously used so just like we did before for the front we're using certain rocks just to kind of place it around our water areas especially and break apart some of those terrain details and get some nicer overall results for when the shadows are going to be hitting it sideways they're just going to get give us some nice silhouettes all overall so yeah just using smaller props like that definitely helps us to get some nice overall results in regards to how we're having our overall environment and uh, just we're making sure that all of them are placed in a way that would look uh, natural and organic and for example if it's the side of a cliff we'd have it lean it towards it so it'd be able to support its own weight in regards to that and pay attention to the way the rocks are placed uh, they're often placed in kind of chunks so they're not just randomly scattered around they have a certain pattern to them in regards to how they keep up with the flow of the overall environment with that kind of curvature look and uh, more of the rocks will be placed next to waterfalls for example just to kind of get that attention towards those areas and yeah after we're done with that of course we had to make use out of our brush using blender just to get more detail out of these rocks and of course by just placing them around the uh, switching up the variation between them we're able to get some really nice results especially for the edges of our terrain because it doesn't just have a simple platform it has some thickness on the sides of the walls for that terrain we gotta make sure we add some additional detail to them in order to just not make it look as plain since although our overall focus is going to be for the structure the overall composition is going to be uh, kind of a zoomed out camera shot a bit of an aerial shot if you a bit of an aerial shot which overall will help us in getting all the believable type of texture towards the terrain uh, of course we're going to be uh, texturing them out in substance beta all the rock formations and whatnot and adding up the rock detail throughout it using noise uh, texture with normal maps is going to be a relatively simple thing to do but of course the main detail has to be uh, sculpted out if we want to get that kind of organic detail out of these rocks and all of its terrain formation and yeah once we're done with that we just had to make sure we set it up properly and right now we're setting up the rock formation the high topology and a low topology which we're going to be using for our environment baking all of our normals onto it uh, they're going to be set up as two different meshes and then afterwards once we're going to be done with that we'll be able to bake all of the detail out using the substance painter mesh baker and uh, yeah that's going to be relatively simple to do we just have to make sure we set it up properly so right now using the naming underscore high underscore low just to tell the meshes the naming apart since uh, substance painter uses the naming convention or they can be used in order to split the meshes apart and give us some nicer bakes overall continuing on uh, working on optimizing our entire scene we had to make sure we have everything set up properly for the texturing part and right now we gotta make sure that we're setting it all up with the water plane so right now when the mesh is going to be uh, set up within our scene and we're going to get some nice results out of it of course we'll need to make sure that we'll have some water flowing through it and we wouldn't be able to get it if we don't have a nice 
um, water plain setup beforehand otherwise because the overall organic uh, terrain that we're having is so complex we wouldn't be able to just simply have a square plane and drag it across and just cover our entire terrain as uh, it would leave us a lot of edges that would kind of extend from the outside of the terrain we'd leave a lot of gaps so we have to use a knife tool and kind of cut out the overall shape for all the water planes and we're using multiple water planes because of the different elevations that we're having and of course for the waterfalls we use different planes as well and set them up in regards for where the water flowing is going to be happening so yeah once we're done with the planes with everything and all of it is set up we're not quite done just yet in regards to moving on with detection process we have to check a couple of things and the first thing that we have to check is going to be the normals we have to make sure that all of them are facing properly the right kind of way so what we need to do is we just have to enable the normal view and check if they're actually properly set up since other than blender a lot of uh, rendering softwares would just uh, by default use a single plane one face textures uh, texturing just to save out on the performance and uh, yeah once we're done with that we have to optimize a little bit with terrain since we're not going to be seeing the bottom of our terrain we can always just cut that off and uh, when we're going to be putting all of our uv maps they're going to be placed with more resolution in regards to that of course we could have uh, split up the overall terrain and had it that up in a way that would have more textures but just cutting the bottom out and saving up on the texture resolution was more than enough in regards to this overall environment and getting us the right amount of resolution from our textures and yeah once we were happy with that we had to think on the way our materials are going to be placed up uh, we could have just done it in the way that each of the asset uh, would be duplicated in regards to how textures are set up so for example a lantern we'd only have one variation of a lantern and then we duplicate it with the same uv coordinates throughout the, our entire scene and this way we could just texture one lantern and get all of the right results for our texturing stage which would have been nice but because we're doing only like an environment a single environment getting unique text, types of textures based on ambient occlusion as well as curvature maps and whatnot on the locations of where the assets are being placed like for example a dirt grunge map affecting uh, our asset differently based on the textures would give it a more unique look so in the end we decided to just simply have all of these assets even though they're pretty much the same to be unique assets just to get a more interesting of a look towards our entire environment and yeah we just ended up simply combining all of those meshes where they use the same material and this way it would just help us to get some easier uh, texture and wraps in the end and in the end we can always just split them up if we want them later on by selection and whatnot so so yeah once we uh, have all the material set up properly for how we're going to pack them up all we had to do was unwrap every single one of them and place them within the uv space one more thing though, when we were setting up our materials, we had to think of the texture density that we're going to get out of them. So I was uh, trying to get the same kind of consistency throughout the texture. So for example, the bridge and the lanterns would be uh, packed up in one material and then the platform and the stairs where the yin yang symbol is would be packed in another and for the main building for example because it was such a large building it would give us a different type of texture density so what i ended up doing is i ended up getting the entire building to be, sp to be split off into two parts and that basically allowed us to get more texture resolution out of the overall result and that shouldn't give us much of an issue when texturing since most of the time we'll be using triplanar projections and by setting up the same values even we'd more or less kind of be blending in the overall result using grunge maps and whatnot so all in all it'll be turning out quite well i was actually quite worried when unwrapping the tiles for the roof as it was giving us such a heavy result in the regards to the uv tiles but all in all when it was done when i began texturing process it was quite all right so all in all I was quite happy with the overall texture density and the uv unwrapping and when i was able i uh, tried to delete some platform ends as well for when it was hidden behind the terrain just to again save up a little bit on that texture resolution but i wasn't bothered by something like landers for example because it was such a small base it didn't it barely even took any of the resolution to begin with so 
it was quite all right for me to leave those in and of course i had to test out the water as well check out the planes had to make sure i give them all uh texture uh uv space as well especially for the waterfalls since they're going to need some textures for the planes themselves to be honest I can use wall position space but because the waterfalls are going downwards uh, vertically it will give us really bizarre results so we just have to make sure we UV unwrap them and of course once we're done with it all all we had to do is export it all out as an FBX and we were pretty much ready to go on to the texturing part Alright, now in order for us to start our texturing process, we began by baking out our mesh maps. And this process is usually really fast, all you gotta do is press the button, just make sure that we have no artifacts and maybe play around with some distance rays in regards to fixing those artifacts. But right now, because we have some detail and some high topology, especially for terrain, we had to uh, bake out our meshes a little bit differently so what we had to do is well firstly we have to bake out all of our texture maps for where we don't use our normals and also i am in occlusion and curvature values i was actually getting some artifacts for the snake for the smaller tower and i wasn't quite sure what was happening actually i got some really bizarre results for it was looking very glitchy and actually the reason why that was happening was because i had so many programs opened up and I think a lot of our, my RAM was used up by other software. It just couldn't handle loading up all of the meshes and couldn't be ready uh, readied up for the texturing process. So I just closed down the software that I wasn't using and that fixed that issue with regards to giving me some glitchy artifacts. But even then I was still getting some really bizarre results for the overall bake. So what I ended up doing is firstly I ended up just getting some bevels on the snake itself. Just to make sure there's a nice transition and once I was done with that of course I had to make sure that the UVs are reprojected again and then afterwards I tried out the just baking out the ambient occlusion values for the snake and I was just getting really bizarre results for it. I was also playing around with a simple pattern material and using triplanar projection just to see if I'm getting the right amount of texture density from my mesh. And by the, looks, by the looks of it, I was getting just the right amount, so I wasn't quite sure what was happening in the end though. Because I was only getting those artifacts from ambient occlusion and not from normal maps, I ended up just making sure that the ambient occlusion is being baked off on its own separate mesh using any information from the terrain itself and that seemed to have fixed an issue but then once i was done with baking out simple mesh i had to make sure i get some detail for the rocks as well as the terrain as well and because we had some high topology meshes out of them we had to load them up within our bake mesh maps window and bake them off separately and then once we're, ha we're happy with that i just got myself a real nice uh, reference for the color palette just to use it as kind of a base point for what exactly type of um, textures I want to use within my scene and of course I started off with the main base kind of a mesh and I had a really nice soil to use as a base texture but by default the color of it wasn't quite as nice so I ended up just getting myself some overlays for that so by just applying a simple layer on top of color layer with a screen blend mode, it just helped me to overlay the entire color and get some brighten up texture. Then afterwards, I played around a little bit with the curvature masks as well to get the right type of a shape and to highlight a little bit some of those crevices within those rocks. And once I was happy with that, uh, getting out the base kind of a foundation for our dirt, I needed to make sure that where the water is being placed underneath it we would have a different type of terrain so getting it a bit of a sandy look for that material was quite nice and by setting up a material with a bit of an overlay and then masking it out with uh, on top of the dirt which later i also lowered it down so it'll be blending in with the dirt itself a little bit the soil as well and in turn would make it more fitting it gave us some really nice results for the foundation on or underneath the water but i was quite i wasn't quite happy with the way it was just yet so i ended up getting some pebbles uh, there's a real nice uh, pebble brush or substance painter of course i think by default it has a really high height value so it was really bumpy and i just ended up just lowering down the overall layer of passive for that just to kind of soften up 
the way they're blended up with the rest of the terrain and yeah once i was happy with that once i was happy with how underwater area turned out for the terrain of course we had to make sure we get some grass in our area as well and by using the reference that i have on the bottom left corner and trying to match that i think i got some uh, real nice color palette and i think the way I use the grass for the material, the way I made sure I blend in the colors is I used two layers. One was multiply layer and one was saturation layer. So I'd be able to desaturate the overall color as well as darken it up as a texture a little bit. Then once I got some nice results out of that, I was able to use a really nice brush, which is a hairy paint brush, usually used for hair, but it gives us a really nice kind of a texture. The way it blends in with our terrain, it makes it look like some grass bits are sticking out from the side so I quite like using it for when I'm painting my grass and I just had to make sure I painted on top of a terrain where it would naturally grow and also making sure that the grass is a little bit broken off for the areas where there's certain elevation and in turn it just highlights the overall shape of a terrain and our scene just kind of becomes a little bit more organic looking also if you notice around the yin yang symbol we have a bare amount of grass within that area just a little bit just to highlight some of those rocky chunks and yeah i think it turned out quite all right in regards to the soil in regards to how the grass is being applied and of course i in order to make sure i avoid the noise being applied on top of our dirt layer because both of them would have a different type of height information and if we were to just simply apply uh, one material on top of another we'd be blending both of these together so what we have to do is we have to go to the high channel itself and we have to change the blending mode to be from soft light i believe uh, we have to change it to be as normal and that way it'll be just kind of deleting the information that's underneath it and just replacing it completely with the grass height information and yeah once we were done with that of course we had to highlight some of those path areas as well a little bit so i used a simple layer, a simple fill layer with a mask and a small amount of opacity and just simply overlaid it on where the walkway is. And of course, now that we're done with the terrain texture, we can move on and texture some of the assets. And to start it off, I figured it'd be nice to start on texturing the bell since it already has some nice areas for the metal as well as the wood. And those are the key components for our assets within the scene and I already happen to have a real nice wood the stylized wood that I often use within my scenes which has a basic pattern as well as some curvature and grunge map masks just applied with one another and all I had to do was just change the base uh, kind of color to be red since that is the main type of wood material that we're going to be using throughout this scene and that just adds a really nice kind of a touch a stylized touch to our scene yeah, once we were done with that, we also had to make sure we had some variation within our lanterns as well. And they're going to be using a missive map. So we had to make sure we apply a channel to our substance painter texture material. And that basically allows the texture to glow a little bit, which in turn gives us some really nice results. So also I made sure to add some emissiveness to the instance as well just to make it look like they're being used and then once we have our main material sorted out because they're using generated masks all we have to do mainly was just reapply it onto our other area so right now for example we're just grabbing our previous materials that we had and setting them up within our staircase and right now i'm trying to reuse the same material the metal material that i had for the bell and i realized it wasn't giving off the right kind of color for the ornamental bits that are sitting at the side of the vents but what i ended up doing i was just uh, applying a different type of adjustment color for the metal just to get more of a yellow tint to it and then afterwards once i was happy with that of course we had to make sure we add some wear to our staircase as well so i manually brushed in the area where people would be walking in i made sure that the brush that i was using has a really low flow value setup so this way it was being applied really gradually and it wouldn't have as much of a sharp texture i was using though a heavy sponge brush and that gives us some really nice stylized results but of course by default that would have been just too much so just by applying it a little bit at a time gave us a really nice uh, texture in the middle of where our path is going towards and once i was done with that of course the end poles that we're having 
that lead to the smaller part of the tower of course we have to make sure that they have nice log wood ends in other areas we don't see where the wood usually ends but in this area it, i think it was quite crucial for us to sort out those alphas so i happen to have some really nice wood alphas that i was able to just stamp it out and then play around with the levels i was able to get a nice kind of sharpness the way i wanted to do the p and then just dragging down the height map to make sure that they're being stamped in into our mesh and then later on they'll be converted into normal maps and it will give us some really nice results and yeah once we're done with the bridge uh, once we're, we're pretty happy with that of course we're going to continue on texturing process this time i wanted to make sure that the platform in the middle is sorted out properly and we're just using a really nice material that it has a base set up as a concrete although it is a concrete by playing around with the values we can get the really nice type of um stone look towards it and i think in the end it turned out quite all right of course i set up some grunge on top of it as well and also i made sure that we have some color variation between the yin and yang symbol that the one is darker than the other and we have to make sure we don't forget to add the same color to the eyes as well because usually within yin yang symbols you would get the eyes to be the same color as the opposite symbol basically so it would represent the kind of a good and bad in each one of us and how the negativity and positivity just kind of coexist with one another and uh, yeah once we're done with the platform of course we uh, continue on with texturing the stairs i wanted to make sure that they blend in nicely with the grass so i added the grass material but i wanted to make sure that the stairs look like they're being used so i used the brush to kind of scrape out a little bit of that grass a little bit from the side just a little bit from the middle section so they look like they've been walked at and once we were happy with that then we had to move on with texturing the main part of the building so the hardest part for this was honestly the masking part since each one of the pieces were set up individually what this meant was that all of the parts where they have different material they had to be set up and textured manually now Having the material set up with automatic generator masks did help definitely, but we had to also make sure we adjust them accordingly since they're always giving us different type of results depending on the location of an area. So for example, uh, the area where we have uh, be closer to the cliffs, the ambient occlusion for example masks would give us uh, some stronger results or for example at the area where it has a frontal section of the building where it's underneath the arc it also be uh, used within ambient occlusion a little bit more so we have to adjust certain values based on that and of course we gotta add like a little bit of a wear tear to the pathway of the building as well and then we just reapply the same material that we had previously so the red wood is being applied onto our structure and i'm trying to figure out if the entire red wood would work out uh, within this entire area and if it actually look good as a type of decoration or if i should use some of the brown wood in this area as well but since it is a real nice decoration as an overall kind of a building of course i left it as a pure red wood i think it looked it looks quite nice so going back to the texturing process the roof part i went on and use the material that also has a base of a concrete and then has some nice overlays with some mossy type of a texture and i had to make sure i adjust some of that color overlay to be a little bit more of a blue tint this way i think it turned out really well in regards to how the light is being reflected and overall material being applied to the environment so once i was happy with that i wanted to add some certain additional smaller detail onto the scene and i just used a really nice flower petal that i had within my alphas i'm not sure if that's a default one i believe it's a default one within substance beta so it's quite easy to set that up We're using a masking and then of course we had to finish it off uh, the building with the door we had to make sure that we're getting the right types of results for the door since it's going to be quite visible and going to stand out quite a lot in the scene so i had to make sure i use some curvature maps just right and get those smaller square ornamentals for the door to be highlighted a little bit using those values and of course we had to make sure that the handles that we're using is set up in a different material in a different metal just to get some nicer variation 
Then afterwards I simply set up a quick material with a masking and then started applying it onto the building just to make sure that uh, my masking is set up properly and is not going to give me any type of mistake when I'm actually setting up a nice material for that. So I used the green default material for that at the start just to help me visualize how the mask looks like and then afterwards it was quite nice and simple to set up the final material to it. Then we also had of course the smaller tower and we just had to make sure we're keeping up with the consistency throughout the environment and using more or less the same uh, materials that we had before. All I'm doing mainly is tweaking out some values for the generated masks especially for the snake and then I was, wasn't quite happy with the way it turned out so I ended up manually painting the top section of the snake a little bit just to make sure it stands out a little bit more within this scene and uh, yeah once I was happy with that I just ended up playing just a little bit more with the roof as well just to make sure that we're getting more or less the same kind of a roof texture that we had throughout this environment and once we got some nice results of course we had to reapply them onto the rest of the parts. So I think the final section that we had left was the arc that connects the bridges and of course we had to make use out of the same materials that we had so it was relatively easy to set it up. Just wanted to get some uh, bit of a moss to come down from the roof tile so I just manually painted in some of the detail like that. Then I was just looking around making sure I didn't miss anything in regards to texturing making sure that all of them are set up properly and of course I forgot the final piece which was the lanterns so it was a relatively simple setup all we had to do was make sure we set up a main red material for our lanterns and also I, I think I used an ambient occlusion just a little bit just to get some different type of a gradient in between those mesh details and uh, after I got a nice kind of highlight out of the ambient occlusion also made sure I mask out the smaller areas for the lantern and just kind of use it as a void to highlight the shape I just simply used a nice black material because they were such a small details so I didn't have to worry about going too much into them and just I think I used a simple solid color for that which I think all in all turned out quite all right we didn't have to overdo it in regards to the noise as otherwise they would just look too distracting and also because they're going to be lit up we're not going to uh, see too much detail out of them anyway so all in all it turned out quite all right but again uh, since we had each of those pieces individually we we had to make sure we mask every single piece out for the lanterns and that was quite a hassle looking back at it maybe we should have unwrapped one lantern and then simply duplicated it throughout the scene but all in all it was quite all right I was quite happy with the result uh, when I was texturing though I quite, wasn't quite happy with the overall detail so I think I added a material that uses height information and made sure I applied that using a cylindrical projection and that gave us some nice rings within our lanterns and yeah once I was happy with that I also wanted to get some additional moss for the rocks so I used local normal position and just overlaid it on the very top of these rocks. And that gave us some nice results with some overlaying grunge masks. So yeah, once I was happy with that, of course, we just had to export everything out. I exported all of them as 4K except for the stairs because the stairs themselves were such a small asset. So I figured it might be just best to keep the same texture density and just have a 2K resolution for those stairs and save up a little bit in performance so yeah once we were pretty much done with that we were now ready to move on and set up our environment scene all right now in order for us to create ourselves an environment we start off with a third person template as it's just really nice to begin with our project of course i created a new level just so we could avoid all of that template level and so we could just start off with a simple basic default lighting. Then after which all I had to do was import an FBX file which contained all of the assets already with the right assigned materials and we just had to make sure we apply the texture maps that we had from Substance Painter onto all of our assets. And so the way we do it is we just create ourselves a really quick EBR material. I should have created one with an emissive map since I know that some of the textures will need to be used with emission. And so by default I just set them up to be uh, multiplier of zero so that way so that way we're not going to be using any of the emissiveness for any of the normal PBR texture materials and for when we do use an emissive we just change that up to be with a multiplier of one 
or even higher just to get more emissive out of it. Then afterwards all we have to do is set up our material to be used as an instance, as a material instance and then we just create a multiple material instances and then reassign all of the texture maps that we have onto our asset onto the material instances and then once we have everything sorted out what we need to do is we just need to replace all the material items that are assigned with material instances and that's just usually the fastest way to get all of the texture maps to be applied onto our unreal engine environment so i just quickly got myself filtered out for the material and material instances so all of them could be in the same content browser and then it was super easy to reassign them that way and then after I was done with that I pretty much had to start working on other bits as well and I needed to get some water for the scene and the water that I'm using actually is from another environment so the previous environment that what we did was a Viking Fjord kind of a scene and I had a real nice water setup with a waterfall so as a starting point as a basis I just imported all of that water asset into the environment so I could play around with the values and set it up in the way that I wanted it to be for this scene. But if you're interested in how I did it from scratch, uh, please go ahead and go check the Viking Pajort scene and that'll show you, uh, it'll give you a better understanding on how this material works. But it's relatively simple to do, all you gotta do is uh, set it up as a single water layer material and then get some uh, absorption and scattering color values set up so we'd be able to tweak it out and get some normal overlays that water motion on the top and then all we had to do was apply it onto our planes that we did uh, that we had from the blender modeling part and of course we had to make sure that the direction for where the water is flowing is going in the direction for where the waterfall is coming towards and that way we'd get a real nice believable kind of water flow water motion of course it all depends on the location of a place uh, for where the water plane is and so for example if it is a larger water body i try to slow down the overall kind of water flow and where it would be a uh, more of a narrow path uh, the increase the speed and that way it would look like there's more of a flow towards the water flows and whatnot and uh, all in all it would look quite nice but i wanted to set it up a little bit more i wanted to get some additional texture for the top of the water because from that perspective from the top perspective that i was looking at the water just by having some normal values it didn't look quite as nice so what i had to do was i simply got those normal maps converted them to a height map and actually just use pretty much the same material the same texture and then uh, use those same patterns that i had the normal maps and applied them onto those height channels and that way by blending the two variations of motion for them together we were able to highlight some of the areas on top of the water which i think turned out quite nice so all in all it was looking quite all right uh, i did want to make some additional changes though to it just to make it look more believable i wanted to have more control using the vertex painting and i was playing around with how i'm going to be setting that up and i think at first i tried uh, setting it up so it would be a separate kind of a vertex paint and um, then uh, I tried experimenting with just having the same vertex control that I had previously for the normal motion and I figured it would be looking quite nice. But I think in the end I just stuck with um, a separate vertex paint so I'd have more control of where the normals are and where the color base color is for that motion of the water using the vertex painting. Of course I'll be doing the vertex painting a little bit later on since we need to add more um, vertices to our meshes right now they are just simple planes and they have uh, literally no vertices on the middle section so by adding them together with some uh, decimation i think it was called using the modeling tool it just helps us to uh, paint some vertices in uh, straight within the unreal engine and afterwards i was getting some weird artifacts i wasn't sure what was going on but in the end i now realized that it was because the default value for the base color uh, when i was using a lerp node it was using 0.5 value i figured that would be the neutral kind of a color but that wasn't the case it turns out i needed to just set it up uh, as a base color to be the default value of zero to give us a pitch black whenever we're uh, painting out the uh, wave uh, color and that way it just uh, kind of turns off all that motion that we had 
and in turn it gives us uh, some nice results. So afterwards I just tried to uh, paint out all the areas where we wouldn't have a lot of blow. So for example in the corners where the water would be a little bit more stale and whatnot. I just painted out a little bit of those waves and that gave us some nice results. And uh, I also played around with the color as well a little bit. Tried a little bit more of a green tint uh, the way I had it in from the reference since I quite liked the, the look. But in the end though I stick with a bluish color as I think just from the top kind of a view uh, from all the angle shots it just turned out to be looking much nicer in regards to the color palette that we're seeing within the environment so yeah all in all that was pretty nice um, the water material that I had from the Viking for Jordan also had some particles as well just to set up the water and just to fake that motion even more so for example we have some uh, water splashes and uh, we're just sticking them to the sides of the water walls and that just kind of makes it look very nice altogether. I think it turned out pretty well. I did add some rotation though in the past I just had them to be like kind of splashing around and then painting out and I realized they don't have a lot of motion for them so what I ended up doing is I ended up doing adding some random velocity rotation when they spawn so they're constantly rotating and in turn that makes it look uh, more of a natural splash because otherwise the splash itself doesn't have any of the animation it's just a simple sprite to the sprite that we're using for this uh, type of um, water splash and uh, to make it more organic we have to use certain uh, tricks to fake the eye basically and yeah afterwards we just had to play around with the waterfalls itself uh, we had to set up some of the water instances and make sure all of them are having the right kind of a speed for the waterfalls uh, i tried using the same kind of parameters as i have for the main water bodies and just make sure um, that the color kind of matches and they're not out as in they don't look like they match with one another and it turned out pretty uh, quite alright. I was checking out the uh, waterfalls making sure that the vertex painting is set up properly as well. And yeah once I was happy with that the next step that we needed to do was add some trees to our scene. And I wanted to create some basic trees for the environment that would have a slight tilt to them. So I started off by playing around with the overall kind of a shape of a trunk and by simply generating it to be uh, hand drawn we can use a spline and just get the right type of shape that we want for our tree. And just simply doing that, we are already getting some nice results. And of course, I just applied some materials that the speed tree provides just to see how it looks like overall. And it's interesting to work with the speed tree because it's so dependent on the node system and how the values are being input. But once you get the main shape out of the way, you then get some bigger branches that are sticking out from the main trunk and then afterwards you get some smaller branches that have even smaller branches attached to it and then all you're left to do is make sure you tweak certain values to get the desired results so right now i'm trying to figure out what kind of shape i want exactly and at first i was actually getting some crashes when i tried to manually move my branch because i wanted to have a main trunk and a single large branch that would be sticking out from the side of this trunk and this way I'd be getting some nice uh, tree variation out of it. So after I was happy with the way that the tree shape is being placed and we got some nice results out of that, I actually had the, all the branches detached beforehand just to make sure that the silhouette of the tree is set up properly. And once I was happy with that, I just reattached all the branches and then started playing around with the branches themselves actually instead of just using the generator as much because I wasn't going to use uh, a lot of that or different variations I decided to just manually go in uh, for certain branches and just play around with the overall shape of the tree and I think it turned out quite all right I just ended up getting each of those uh, smaller trees that are kind of growing from underneath and then placing them to the side of my tree and I also played around a little bit with the way they're being grown out in the shape and you can actually connect it to a sphere shape or your own custom shape for example and get some really nice custom shapes out of your tree so right now because I connected it uh, with the sphere shape I was getting a more of a spherical design out of the tree and once I was happy with that I just again played around with the whole design of a tree making sure that the branches are sticking out in the way that I want them I didn't want to have any of the branches going downwards so I just had to make sure I manually readjust them just like that and I simply um, made sure that 
The twigs are also not being applied onto the main trunk, but also they're being applied onto the side branch as well in the same kind of pattern, in the same kind of way. So that way we'd have two main foliage areas for the main branch as well as for that smaller branch sticking out. And I think all in all it turned out quite alright. Maybe looking back though, I should have added more leaves to it. As from a distance for the environment, it might have looked a little bit too bare looking. But all in all, I quite like the overall design of this tree. And, and once I was happy with it, all we had to do was set up some wind simulation to it as well. Which is relatively easy to do using something called Wind Wizard. You just uses the template from another tree and kind of reapplies it onto all of your branches. And I think I left just the default kind of settings for the wind. And it just gives us some nice wiggle for all of those leaves. And yeah, once we were happy with that, I just exported out my tree. And I was basically ready to move on to set everything up within my Unreal Engine project. And then once we were done with the trees, we can finally import them in into our environment and check how they look within the scene. And they turned out pretty nice. They uh, have a certain shape that just complements the overall design of the environment. And I think it's just stylized enough for it to fit right within the scene. And yeah, when I was placing them down, I tried at first to placing them one by one, but having them uh, just singled out wouldn't look quite as natural. So whenever you're placing foliage, uh, just gotta make sure you clump it down sometimes so there'd be one tree sticking to another. And we can also play around with the size a little bit with rotations. And sometimes even if we scale it down in one axis, you can just uh, scale it to a negative value and kind of flip it, mirror it to the other side. And that way you'd get a different variation of the tree entirely. And yeah, once I was happy with the trees, of course we had to add some foliage. So I happened to have a, a really nice foliage pack from the foliage video that we did previously. And I just made sure I import them in properly. And then after I was happy with the import, I just pretty much just got all of these in. And uh, I was trying to think what kind of um, foliage I want. I tried to play with reeds a little bit. I realized that, that it's not going to look quite as nice. Although I do think I left a couple of them in just to break apart certain shape as I think it looks quite nice, especially under the bridge. But the main part for the water was the lily pads. So in order for us to get the right kind of results, of course we have to place them right on top of the water. Just enough so it'd be sticking outside and they'd look like they're floating. Of course we also have some smaller foliage as well that are within the water itself. And that way we get some nice depth out of our foliage this way. And by playing around with the values, the Z placement, we're able to kind of use our water planes and place that foliage on top of them while still being it underneath while when the z value of the placement is being negative they're just going to be dragged down and this way they're going to look like they're underwater and uh, yeah once i was happy with the way the foliage turned out for the water of course we had it uh, we had to add some lighting for the lanterns in our environment we needed to highlight that entire shape and at first I was using quite an intense value but later on when I was playing around with the overall lighting with the overall setup, uh, scene setup and direction lighting especially I uh, think I turned down the intensity by quite a bit as it was just standing out too much we had to have like a certain harmony a certain balance when we were looking at our environment no matter the angle and whatnot since it is a 3D kind of a piece, a miniature version of an environment, we had to make sure that each one of the parts, each one of the lighting pieces just complement one another. And uh, yeah, once I set up the basic lighting, I went back to the foliage and then started playing around with the grass foliage. I set up some basic, very basic grass. I didn't want to use any of the additional kind of ferns that I had. As I had, as I kind of envisioned this scene to have a sort of a minimalistic type of low grass and of course I made it to be quite short in regards to that as well. Looking back at it though, maybe I should have added, uh, maybe I shouldn't, should have brightened up the entire grass foliage, but I'm not sure if that was necessary at the moment, as uh, right now thinking about it, uh, it might have fitted a little bit more with the overall texture for the terrain, for the grass pieces, if I would, were to have lightened them up. but. All in all, it turned out quite alright. I quite like the way it breaks off the terrain, the foliage itself. And I quite like the overall design. And right now, what I was playing around was, I tried to get like a nice sunset or uh, sunrise for our scene. And uh, uh, default environment for Unreal Engine is already set up really nice for that. And it has a really nice 
kind of ways to play around with the settings the, but the downside of it though is that it only goes to the horizon all the clouds and whatnot all the environment the atmosphere setup and the sun itself just goes kind of to the towards the horizon and because we're having we're going to have a camera that goes slightly upwards uh, we're not going to be able to see the camera uh, the sun unless we position our camera to be horizontal to the entire environment so I was trying to figure out what to do, I was playing around with the values a little bit more and was thinking that maybe it'll look well for now though I left it as is and I realized that we don't have enough detail for the water just yet so I ended up uh, making use out of the particles that we had uh, with the water as well, the ones that have a slight kind of a foam movement and that just gives some real nice effects for where the water is a little bit more stale of course for the bridge itself we also need to add a certain motion for it as well luckily the water material that we used uh, on the for george scene had uh, pretty much the same kind of a problem and they had some supports where they had the water passing through them and so I had the perfect type of texture to use on those underneath bridges kind of parts. And then once I was happy with that, I then uh, realized that I'm just going to set up a nice gradient to be used later on. And I actually used the same kind of a cube, uh, set it up as the two-sided material later on and set it as unlit. Uh, used the green screen and basically got myself some nice background using Photoshop and then applied it in the post process in Premiere. Just to uh, have a nice presentation for our environment. Again, because I... I have an issue for where the horizon ends and I wanted to kind of paint it a little bit more with the overall scene setup. I couldn't just leave it as is and so yeah later on I just ended up fixing it uh, using a green screen. But now I still want to add a little bit more of a motion within water so the waterfalls need to have some certain ripple within them and uh, it's actually quite simple to do. So I ended up doing just that and uh, getting some real nice results out of it. And once I was happy with that, again, I went back to the lighting. Tried to play around with like a dawn type of a light setup and it was quite nice, but I didn't quite like the way the shadows are being bounced off by default. If the shadows are too hard, I just increase the skylight intensity and that would kind of soften up the overall um, ambient lighting for our, our scene. But the downside of that, because we were trying to get the sunlight to be from the other side, we'd basically be getting a lot of silhouettes out of our environment and that just didn't look quite as right. So I went in and just got myself a nice kind of a shadow setup that has a directional setup for the front and that would give us some real nice highlight on the overall asset. It just helps us to present all of our shape, all of our, our environment properly. And although the background would have like a sun in the back, it would still look quite all right, I reckon. And yeah, got back, I now just went in and uh, got myself a blue screen, I just left it as is. Although, when you're working with this kind of a setup, you need to make sure that the skylight that you're using is set in a way that uses a specified cube map instead of just using a real-time kind of ambient lighting. Otherwise, you'd get a lot of uh, kind of um, a blue or green shine if you're using an unlit material to have it in your background and that would be obviously quite problematic and uh, i was afterwards i played around with the main camera shot trying to figure out how it's going to look like and then once i was happy with that i just basically added it in within the scene added some bit of a motion to it just to make it look more authentic uh, as in the presentation and just to draw the overall eye towards the scene and then afterwards, I wanted to get myself the center point of the overall environment. So the fastest way for me to do that is getting a cylinder within the center of the entire environment, just expanding it afterwards and making sure that each one of the corners are being placed at the edge of the environment. And this way you can kind of position this overall cylinder to be at the very center with the gizmo with the pivot to be at the very center of the environment. And then you can place an actor that is attached to the camera and just basically it allows you to get a really nice organic type of a turntable that just covers the entire kind of environment in a right way because if you're working with environments that have broken up pieces right away the first issue would be uh, when it's rotating towards one angle you might not have enough space and it kind of cuts off from the camera and in other places it might not be uh, close enough for the camera and the entire shot would be kind of like in a small section of the video and so we basically want to make use out of the entire frame as much as possible without cutting off 
the edges when we're doing a turntable. And yeah, once we get that, uh, of course, we gotta get some additional uh, close-up shots in order to present the scene. And so by using certain uh, areas for the main angles and just getting some real nice close-ups to highlight certain detail for this environment is usually a really nice way of doing it for whenever you want to present your work. And of course, uh, we had to set up the final shot, which was a transitional shot for all of those transitions for the videos. And in the past, I used to do them like as just a 10 second kind of a thing, just like I did for most of my shots. But then I had to just speed it up and it wouldn't look quite as good for, for whenever we're working with some motion like uh, water, for example. So right now I ended up just getting myself a 5 second uh, video for that transitional shot, which turned out much better. And of course, I forgot to add the fire, so I added the quick uh, fluid simulation for the fire and just used Niagara fluid simulation plugin for that and just played around with the settings a little bit, got myself the right type of heat, the right type of smoke that I want. The most, uh, the biggest difficulty probably was to getting the right type of boundaries for the porch and just by playing around not only with the boundaries but with the scale as well and going into the particle system just to make it smaller as well as just making sure that the velocity is going the right kind of way just playing around with those it just gives you the right type of a look and make sure that the top when the fire goes upwards doesn't get cut off and just all in all it makes it look very nice and uh, also i usually like to add uh, light flickers to the scene but overall i think the motion was quite on enough and I ended up just having a still kind of a light throughout our entire environment i think that just makes it look not too distracting as an overall scene and afterwards happy with that of course we had to render everything out i have some real nice settings set up for the movie render queue if you're not able to use that just make sure you enable that within the plugins tab and i render everything out in jpeg sequences or PNG sequences, I'm not sure which one was that. But anyway, as images sequences and then afterwards, I also make sure that the output directory is uh, equivalent to the folder of a camera. So each of the camera shots would create its own separate folder. And then afterwards, it's super easy to import each one of those different uh, footage frames and kind of stitch them all up together later on. So yeah, once I was happy with that, I just ended up rendering everything out and applying a blue screen uh, key effect afterwards within Premiere to just add a nice background to the overall scene. Now that we're finished with it all, let's go ahead and review the entire process. The modeling part took a whole 9 hours and 37 minutes to complete as the entire project was quite large scale and there was a need to add a lot of details to the selection which wasn't too difficult or technical. It did have a few parts where we had to keep consistency with the ornamental detail to make sure that everything fits within the environment. If you're new to 3D modeling, this type of a project can easily be overwhelming. The most important thing when working is to keep consistency throughout the entire modeling process and not be afraid to go back and make adjustments to the previous model parts in order to make it more fitting as an overall environment, as it is quite easy to get the tunnel vision and you might not consider the scene as a whole. The other part was getting the meshes to look nice using the formation tools for the roof as well as for the bridge, as this helps to get some stylized shapes. But we need to consider the structure's flow when applying it on meshes as to not overdo it using them. So all in all, I will give this one an 8 out of 10 due to the sheer size of this project. The texturing part took 3 hours and 11 minutes to paint the whole scene. We had to start by making sure to get the right type of mesh map picks out of assets. For some, we used default low poly as high topology. For others, we put a high topology ready for the base. So this process itself took some time to set it up. If you have little knowledge on baking process, it might be a little bit too hard to follow. As for the applying textures, most of the work was done using generator masks to create and generate small materials. And we also had to adjust on all the ones in order to fit the scene. The hardest part for me was, oddly enough, the roof as it required a lot of grunge detail to make it believable, but simply overdoing it would make it look noisy. And I was worried that it would make it too distracting. But all in all, it turned out quite nicely and we got some really nice scene painted in the right color scheme and in the right kind of way. So all in all, I will give this one a 7 out of 10 as although there was a lot of texturing work, most of it was masking out detail for the meshes and working in between the materials which adds some time to the whole process. The environment setup part took 3 hours and 41 minutes. That is including the speed tree part. 
I was considering getting a separate segment for that part, but it was such a short part that I just ended up adding it with an overall environment, which of course adds some bit of an extra time. That being said, it was still quite a lengthy process. Most of the time it took was to set up all the water material and its effects together with the foliage. We had to make sure it looks believable and natural. The shape of the water planes were definitely complex and we had to work on the flow of the water for a bit longer to make sure we set it up all to look a little bit more organic. All in all, I will give this one a 7 out of 10 as it was a complex uh, environment to set up in regards to the water, but other than that, it was mainly setting up the basic vegetation and lighting, which I think anyone with some good foundational knowledge is capable of doing it to present this type of work. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the video for the Japanese Imperial Dynasty Environment Guide. Make sure to give us a like if you did, and don't forget to drop a comment down below of what you would like us to see us do next. Also check out the links down below to see a massive library of courses we have available which are free to anyone that signs up to our Patreon. We also have some free goods on our Gumroad, things like texture packs and some models for anyone to download. And that'll be all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.